Coach Mooney, you had two scrimmages. I wonder if you might give us a sort of a summation or assessment of what you thought of this. Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, it's always obviously good to play other teams, and for us, uh, really good because we have so many newcomers. Uh, I thought that, um, you know, some of the things that, that we need to continue to get better at, uh, just in terms of timing and precision, are probably what we anticipated. You know, you get it, you get to a certain rhythm and timing playing against yourselves on defense and vice versa. So playing against another team that has a you know a different level of speed and timing and emphasis is 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 really good for us. So I thought I thought they were they were very productive. I thought we did some really good things and um, you know kind of reinforce some things that we can need to continue to get better at. But all in all, I think very positive. Have you made a decision yet about any redshirting? We have not. Uh, we have not. So this will, uh, you know, you know, as you don't necessarily have to, but uh, time is is closing in on that. I, I think that we have, um, you know, there's possibility of a couple of guys. We've always left that decision ultimately to the player and his parents, uh, but we haven't made any final decisions. What do you know about this group that you didn't know before your? Uh, you know, I would say that's a good question. I, I feel like they just more reinforce the things. I think we have a backcourt uh, that can really put pressure on the defense that has great speed. Um, you know, I feel like uh, what, we, what we really kind of need is just everyone to be aggressive. And I think that as you're learning everybody and, uh, you know, the way we play where there is passing and cutting and moving, you know, being aggressive is not as simple as just take the ball and go to the basket, you know. And so I think that uh, just continuing to understand how each guy can be aggressive uh, during the course of one possession or during the course of, of a half or whatever uh, is important. And I, and I think that's what that's what we have been talking about. So the other and playing against an opponent that's different just makes those things uh, more, you know, more evident and just, uh, you know, an opportunity to teach guys to be as aggressive as possible, even though we're playing a style that relies on passing and moving and playing together. Well, that leads to my next question. How different is this for you? Because Richmond hasn't always been known for speed and aggression offensively. Sure. And how do you marry that to the Princeton concepts yeah. that you've run yeah. for so long? Yeah, I don't think it's that uh, unique. You know, I think our our best offensive teams have have played faster, just as a as a result of guys being good players who can get baskets more quickly. And so, um, you know, I, I think when when uh, the the team in 2020 averaged over 75 points per game, and that was a lot because Jacob and Blake and Nick they could they could score at any time in the shot clock, but especially early and could put pressure on them. So I don't think it changes all that much. I think it's just more a mindset of all those guys to be as aggressive as possible. Does any of this experience remind you of your first or second season here? Yeah. With so many new faces trying to understand a new group of players. Yeah. Not really. Certainly not the first season. Uh, the, the, the second season, it was so many of those guys were so young, and so we were we were so skinny and so weak and so, um, you know, overwhelmed physically at times. And uh, even when we would play good basketball, it was it was it was hard because we weren't necessarily slow, but our weakness, you know, made everything uh, that much more of, of a fight. So this is different. I mean, there, there are newcomers, but we also get to work. The guys have been here since the summer. You know, there are some things there that make it a little, that we're a little bit more familiar than we would have been before the, all these rules have changed. Uh, but yeah, having new guys and, you know, you can't just say, oh, remember that happened because so few guys have been here for very long. And, you know, it's a problem or an issue that everybody has around college basketball. Uh, and it's just something we need to continue to fight through and probably, you know, once in a while, a reminder to the new guys, like, hey, this is how we've that we've been successful in the past and your particular talent and ability can help us in this way. So, uh, but I think we're, we're able to do that. Coach Mooney, this is a comeback for you personally from your health care last March. I wonder if you could discuss coming back on a professional and a personal level, if you've changed anything professionally in uh, big picture. Uh, yeah. It's changed the way you approach your job. 
Yeah, I think to a certain degree it has. Uh, we had an event the other night, and and it was a similar similar question. You know, we got back into it so quickly with recruit recruiting was so hectic, uh, and then guys are here and we're pre playing. But I think all in all, I think when when something like that happens, you know, uh, you certainly take an account and. The biggest thing is probably to make sure that you're patient and, you know, as my boys grow and, and get older uh, at home, I, I think just make sure you're patient, make sure you grab a guy. Um, you know, you want the nature of the sport is that you have to be demanding uh, and the nature of the guy's schedules and how to improve and to become a really good player at this level, that, that's going to be demanding. But making sure you take a little bit of time and, uh, you know, talk to the guys um, more often than maybe I would have when I was really young and um, you know not taking for granted that they're they're fine and they get it and they understand that, that this has to be demanding just making sure they understand the bigger picture and you know why we're being so demanding or why things um, are tough uh, so I would say that's probably the biggest part. How importantly will you be less involved in terms of dealing with officials, counseling them, or uh, counseling your players, anything along those lines? I'm, I've been trying for a long time to make sure that, uh, you know, that we have good composure on the bench. Not just me, but everybody. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't anticipate too much of a change other than the fact that, um, you know, that we're, we're always working towards that because I think that is uh, certainly something that's important to the to the entire game. So, um, but I wouldn't say from, from last year to this year necessarily. Hey, do you have any thoughts you'd like to share on the NIT selection? how the difference affects you. Yeah, well, when I saw the, f in, in uh, 2014, I believe, we, we were, you know, kind of a NIT level uh, team, or NIT level uh, RPI. Mm -hmm. And there were 13 conference champions that year from the low major, which is higher, maybe uh, plus three or four than the average who didn't win their conference tournament. So in that regard, it would have been good for us. However, the second part that came out where they guarantee the, you know, the next two finishers in the big conference, I mean, it's a joke. I, I don't think anybody has, you know, if you don't consider it a joke, uh, you know, that's, you're, you're probably in one of those conferences. But to have, uh, you know, Ohio State would have been in last year. They were five and 15 in their conference. I mean, you know, that's, uh, and I think a lot of those teams are going to decline the invitation anyway. So to be guaranteed a home game by virtue of what conference you're in, you know, regardless of how you did, essentially, uh, I think it's a joke. Uh, you don't buy the notion that this is sort of a preemptive strike uh, by the NCAA, the new tournaments yeah. being, coming down the road, and they want to make sure they got their straight yeah uh, no I, I buy that notion and uh, I just I think that um, if you're gonna do something like that expand the field by eight and have you know have a uh, give buys to the top eight seeds it probably take the same amount of days and uh, if you're really serious about the NIT then I think it would be in Madison Square Garden the semifinals and finals and um, you know you're you're just you're there's no, there's, it's a, it's very hard to be in a, a lower conference and then you have another incentive removed. And, um, you know, unfortunately it's just the way of the world and then because of the conference realignment and football being such a, an incredible money maker or generator, uh, that this is a way to try to protect those schools, but aren't they already protected by the you know, and the top two, or the, the next two teams out, I mean, a lot of those are going to be coaching changes. And, you know, it just, it sets up for, I think, you know, an uncomfortable decisions by those schools. And I, I don't think it, I don't think any college basketball fan was clamoring to have uh, a, a few more high majors in the NIT. Delani, obviously, chemistry, creation of chemistry or cohesion, it's going to be huge for this team. So many new pieces, mm -hmm. new pieces last year. How do you address that, and where do you think you are? Um, see, so surprisingly, I think 
from the summer, we've actually been able to create a, a good chemistry between each other. I think more so learning how each other plays and getting each other in the right spots. That'll probably come more as we play with each other. But as far as relationships and brotherhood, I feel like that's uh, really at a strong suit right now. I feel like we kind of connect and we gel together off the court and on the court. Could you maybe address a thing or two that has improved in that area since you guys got back together once school started in terms of creating that on-court chemistry? Well, for me, it's, it's really been new since, you know, I'm a transfer and everything. But I would just say the guys have been very welcoming. It wasn't – and I kind of talked about this in another interview. It's just about being egoless, you know. Without those egos, it's really – easy to accept each other and everything. I feel like that's something that we've been able to do as we'll all invite each other to go to the calf. You can't make it, yeah, you can't make it, but at least we all invite each other. We're all thinking about being together with each other. How does Richmond avoid a slow start given the newness of so many of the guys? Um, see, so I think a part of that is just we got to come out we got to play hard regardless. I mean, you know, the offense is going to come. Like I said, finding each other where we get the ball best or each other's spots, that'll come. But I feel like what we really can dominate on is just playing harder than the other team. Maybe part of this make you feel like a freshman again? Uh, yeah, it definitely does, right? It's a whole new arena I'm going to be playing in, a whole new team. So it definitely does make you feel like a freshman, but I've been through a lot throughout my college career, so I can never really see it through that lens, you know? Why is this a better opportunity for you than well, of course you think it's a higher level, so from that aspect, but it's just, it's also been, it's a place for me to grow as a player, as a person, um, just coming to Richmond, so I feel like that's the biggest aspect of, of my game and of life, you know? What were your perceptions of Coach Mooney and his team before you got here? Like, how was this program viewed from outside the program? Mm -hmm. Well, so, of course, I know recently they made a tourney push and they won a game in the tournament. So, of course, I know a little bit about the history, about how the school is about winning. And that's kind of something that I really realized through my meetings with Coach Mooney is he's a player's coach and his main thing he wants to do is win. So, all the extra stuff, you know, like attitudes and being a bad guy or anything, that's not really what he's for. And I feel like that's why I fit the criteria. What did you perhaps learn about yourselves from the two scrimmages that you didn't know going up against each other every day until the two scrimmages? Well, we definitely knew about the talent, but it was just about how we were going to put it all together with each other. And I feel like that was probably the most challenging thing. It was we've been in here playing against each other for so long, playing against our offense. It was kind of different to see how other teams play, but it was also helpful to kind of adjust to it. And that's where I think playing hard can kind of come into play more because playing hard can kind of cancel out the big things that that appear in the game, you know, as far as not cutting right or not talking as much. If you're playing hard, you can make up for those things. You like the talking leadership yeah. aspect of this thing, don't you? How, you how impactful? We like that too, yep. by the way. Yep. How impactful do you think that needs to be for this team, as John asked, to get off to a good start? Uh, I think it's very impactful because communication is key on the basketball court. Of course, me coming from Wagner is a smaller crowd, but coming into Richmond, you see the arena, you see the Robins, so it's going to be really loud, it's going to be really packed. So communication with each other has to be on point and it has to be vital. The one word coach keeps using to describe you guys is speed. Mm -hmm. How does that play into your game? See, so um, speed plays into my game a, a lot, you know, in the half court, in the full court. I feel like that's my biggest threat is putting the defense on the heels. I feel like when I can get going that way, it opens up a lot of my teammates' game as well. How about defensively? He has hinted at least that there could be some more full court defense. Yeah, of course. Um, I said this in my first uh, interview with Vita. You know, uh, defense picking up 94 feet is kind of um, something I identify myself as. So we'll definitely be seeing a lot of defensive side as well.